Today I'm painting a giant from the city states which Parabellum sent me as a nice gift. Hey there Easterlingers, hope you're having a good day. Alright, so we already primed this miniature with a giant amount of paint. So it was primed with a spray paint of black matte primer. And then uh, we uh, then did a top spray of Mechanicus Standard Grey. And then I did a slap chop method of the white, so a matte white all over this miniature to really get the details. And we're gonna have some fun with airbrushing today. I'm really trying to get my airbrushing techniques done even better now. So I've been playing around with this a lot more and I wanna see, like especially on a big miniature, it's a lot more easier to get the coverage you want right away. And with that like grisaille or zenithal highlight, you don't have to put it on thick, right? You can, it goes on thin so you get the undercoating uh, come out anyway so it gives you your your nice little shadowy effect plus if you go like closer to the edges you can have more of a shadow there uh, just so much fun and we're starting off with a nomad flesh so this is gonna be a color triad from the army painter and I know you guys right there yeah I know you saw it on the leg there that huge gap and I tried to fix as much as I could I use some liquid green stuff on a lot of the bigger gaps and it's I don't know I guess this is the first time I noticed that it dries so like choppy kind of thing i usually it usually comes out really nice and flat that leg right there was just the worst and it, it only really popped up when i started painting the color so what i did is i put a little bit of sprue glue back on top of it after and it does cover up a little bit uh it does reclose that seal a bit more but i don't know if like again if this was a um demo or a, one of the bad batches of their things that's why they sent it to us you know just to, to check it out anyways i mean it's not a bad miniature it's just sometimes there's a little goof up sometimes you know right in the, in the printing process or in the manufacturing and i'm okay with them giving me this this is an amazing miniature i mean i am so happy parabellum did this for me and i was super excited i was like going crazy i was like oh my god they sent me a giant like what <laughs> you know like this is not a cheap miniature anyway so barbarian flesh right now for the second mid-tone uh, version and then we're going to be putting on the wildling flesh right on the top edges just trying to get where the light would really hit and it really makes it go a little bit pinker you can see that a bit more again though when i put the wash on now you guys tell me if you're an airbrush person can you please tell me if doing this right now putting the wash was a good idea or should i just left the skin as it was but i did want him to have a darker skin because in the image he has a darker skin so like a tan flesh but i'm using the darkest like this what is it called the dark skin tone wash and i found it was going on like i should have watered it down you know i think maybe that was my issue like i was putting it on and i'm like it was felt pasty and i didn't before i've used it before and i just time this time it was just weird i don't know if it's because it was on a giant miniature and it was like more like putting a paint on than putting a wash on like it wasn't really running itself anywhere so I was like so if you're into airbrushing if you airbrush minis can you let me know if I should have put this wash on or not and maybe just leaving the skin do the job it was doing like maybe it turned my it looked nice right so I don't know if I just messed this whole thing up I mean this is what miniature painting is all about you try stuff and you don't like it well you could start over I could go over again with some of the skin tones again with the airbrush and go over this again and just hit the raised muscles do a dry brush maybe over the skin again it dries okay there are some spots that it pulled up that I hadn't noticed while I was doing this so I don't know if it pulled up afterwards because I found like at the moment you don't see any pooling but like it dried up a bit more all right now we're going to be prepping some areas with some con we're going to be using contrast paints on this min on this miniature for the rest of it now and I'm using Black Legion on his charcoal arm, his spine there, and on the two of the tips of the trident. I still have a problem with him being called an Hephaestian. When Hephaestus was a blacksmith with a hammer. There is a hammer in the... I You know what I should have done? I should have kitbashed this. Because you have your choice of making either a Promethean or a Hephaestian. And I think Promethean should have had the trident. Because he reminds me uh, more of... Um, Poseidon okay but Hephaestion should have had the hammer and I don't want to I, I seriously I it, it ticks me off when I saw it originally I was like no he should have the hammer I should have put the hammer on this guy just to make it even more different not the same as everyone else is probably gonna end up painting if they got this as a gift as well uh, anyway so some bad moon yellow there on the hair and right away we're gonna toss on some Griffhound orange to really mix it in we're gonna wet blend this all 
All right, we're gonna toss that together. And then we're gonna toss on right away a Flesh Terror's Red to get a really cool fire effect. And it's gonna darken down the tips there. And I'm putting globs of this on there. Like I really want it to be uh, fire looking. And you know what, I find it looks good. Gorgrunta fur for his beard. And what's cool is this kind of gives it a orangey hint to it. Uh, and I find it kind of like blends in well into the face, but also kind of looks like the the flame is still a bit there Like as if like he had a beard that was like a little on fire, but not much Now another long part on this miniature is the all the straps and the leather stuff So we're doing that with some Gorgrunta fur. We're gonna be doing his sandals And <laughs> you guys remember when I talked about sandals with um, Ankh and how much I hated them Well, at least this one the sandals are sticking out more there's more of a, a detail in them, so they're not like stuck to the like all the part of the foot where you can't figure out what is the sandal and what's not. A lot more skin protruding on all those straps, so it was a lot easier to figure everything out. So it was a lot easier to paint that. Uh, and again, the reason why I'm using the Gorgonta for the sorry the, the contrast paints is because of the fact that I was using this underpainting. Now I do have to say though that speed paints work a lot better on the slap chopper grizai method. Okay, way better. I, I'm not I'm, I'm, I'm not saying go put all speed points instead now, but I do have to say that they're they're thinner, right? And I find that they do a better job having that highlight in it. Contrast paints do a great job. I you know when you're I'm not and if you're batch painting, I guess, and you don't have to like you, you know you can just open the little bottle, take what you need. I mean the army painter stuff, the speed paints, it's dropper bottles, so you're not always sure if you're taking the right amount, if you're taking too much, not enough. So you might waste some of the paint more than anything else. But you know what? You don't need much. I find with the army painter paint, you I sometimes I put one drop and I still have something left. Even putting on like let's say almost all of this here, the belt, let's say. And so I don't know if it's because their coverage is better, the way it flows or whatever. Sometimes I notice that the contrast paints are a little bit thicker, so I guess I could have put it on a palette and then added a little bit of medium to it. Some of the contrast paints I've actually literally put medium in the bottle and shook it up enough and it became more liquidy and more watered down and it actually does a better job that way. So if you feel like doing that, you can as well. Again, I really want to thank Parabellum War Games for sending me this miniature. I was so surprised when I got this in the mail. Was not expecting it at all. I did get a delivery notification, like a, 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 a mail thing. So I was like, okay, yeah, cool. They're sending me a little something here. That's nice of them. And I was not expecting this. I mean, if you want to pre-order this guy, uh, which is still available now, and I think he's being released next week in uh, uh, to the general public, uh, you can go take a look at their eShop and use the East Mini 10 promo code and not only will you get 10%, but you're also going to support the channel, which I get like a credit and I can use to buy myself stuff off of their site, which is awesome. So it's, it's really a good thing. And uh, then I get to get more of these cool miniatures because they're, you know, I don't play the game enough, but I love the miniatures and I love painting them. I'm going to try and paint a little bit more on the channel, uh, even from older sets, because I'm sure some people that are just getting into this game would like to see how to paint them. And I want to show you guys how to paint them. Snakebite leather now for the ropes that are holding up uh, one of his tools there. And now we're using some wild wood on uh, the staff of the, 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 yeah, on the staff part of the trident. And we're, uh, I mean, again, it looks good. It looks like wood uh, with a grisaille effect. It has a little graininess to it, which is not bad. Now, the city states on the images everywhere have blue in them, whether it's a very bright blue. Or anyways, but I want to go with a darker blue on this guy, but I still wanted that blue. So I went with Celestium Blue. Okay, this is a nice contrast paint, but again, it doesn't, that, that doesn't, it, it's not light enough for it to have that contrasty look. You could go back over it later with some lighter blue or dry brushing and just hit the edges. Um, I didn't do it because when it did dry, it does show the light a bit more. Like the light color does come through a bit more. It looks right now like very dark. And yeah, I'm doing the inside part too. Just in, you know, why not? It doesn't really matter because it is black on the inside and it, it won't really get noticed much. Uh, but I did it anyways here. I'm also doing the uh, other part of the, the, the trident there with this blue. So it kind of like ties it all in. Has a little bit of more color to him as well. I know he's like a fire god or something in this one, but... And by the way, I'm really bad with lores of games, so don't ask me more about that. But you can comment in this thing and I can look it up and find it out or whatever. Garagak Sewer now for this other little, um, I guess, apron that he has on him. This does a great job for leathers or uh, lighter colors, like a pants or whatever. I, I find that did a great job and it does a great job. 
Okay, so I found out that my... What is it? What's the name of the gold? Liberator armor, I think it's called, or something like that. Completely dried up. I think there was a tiny little crack in the cap. It dried up completely, so a waste of a half a bottle. So I used Greedy Gold from Army Painter, but I super watered it down. Just so that it became... You know what? I should have just used Speed Paint Medium. I thought of it after. I'm like, why don't I just do that? But this still keeps the undercoating show through the gold, which is perfect. And I did the same thing with the Balthazar Gold, which I dropped, by the way, on my table. And lost half of that. So I'm just having a bad paint day here. <laughs> I mean, I lost my gold in in Citadel. And I've now lost half of my Balthazar gold. Yeah, I might just stick to metallics from Army Painter because of the dropper bottles. Or I, ended up, I have to maybe put the Citadel stuff in dropper bottles. I don't know. Some lead belcher now to do all the little clips. I'm also doing that weird tool of his uh, on the backside of his, uh, his, what is it? his pouch there kind of thing. So this weird, I don't even know what that is. If anyone out there knows what this tool was for, it looks like some sort of like press or a clamp. But I'm not 100% sure. It almost could be a knife too. I don't know. But if you know what it is, please comment down below or even what you think it is. And I'll be glad to take a look at those and uh, comment or reply to them as well. Because I'm interested in knowing what it is. I don't even know if they would explain it. So I'm doing all these little knobs on him and all that. On his armor here and there. All the belt buckles and getting all that lead belcher. And lead belcher, by the way, is a great covering paint. I love it. I've loved it since I've had it. It, it is a nice paint. But beware, they can dry up and you have to be careful with those types of paints with the lid on top. So if you're painting for a while, make sure to close it up, shake it up again. Uh, some Screaming Veil now for that last tool. These looks like some sort of pinchers. Again, this guy's a blacksmith, okay? Why does he have a trident? I know that the, 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 the charcoal look or the flame look is on the trident, but you could do something else with Promethea and make it water or ice instead. You know, but it, again, it just blows my mind that they didn't put the hammer on this guy. Sorry, Parabellum, but I really wish I'd put the hammer on this guy. I don't know if you have time to switch it up or do something, but if you agree with me, t please comment that one below and maybe make Parabellum listen to us. <laughs> Nolan Oil. They are very good, by the way, listening to us. You have a problem with anything, especially their new app. By the way, their new app is out. Go take a look at that. It works great for army building, saving your lists. Uh, if you have a bug, you report to them, they fix it right away. So Nolan Oil on his armor, because I wanted that armor to stay used looking. And I put some also on some of the silver parts here and there. And then I'm going to put some Agrax Earthshade on top of that Screaming Bell and on top of his, uh, like, that armor, whatever. And I'm doing all the bottom. And I forgot that this guy's a big miniature. And I started doing the base here, not thinking he was off camera. But you're going to see what all, in a, in a second here, I'm going to pull him up and show you a bit more. But the Agrax Earthshade does a great job of bringing that, like, earthy tone to a base where you've done the grisaille effect, okay? Like, I really did the grisaille effect down there because the Mechanicus Standard Gray hit most of it and then the white just really made those details pop. And you can see that Agrax Earthshade just does a great job. And I do a, a, I love what I do with the base on here. All right, we're bringing out my crazy speed, or uh, speed paint, my uh, airbrush, and I've never done this precise of airbrushing. And I'm doing this because I saw someone else do this to do a glowing effect from the inside. All right, so I'm hitting every single one of those little cracks. Okay, and if you don't have an airbrush, you could take a paintbrush, but make sure that it hits a bit of the edges as well. So see, there's an overspray sometimes, and I want that because I want the lava or the fire in his arms to protrude a bit more and give that glowing effect, all right? And that's what the thing is here. And the guy, I don't remember who I watched to do it, but see, now I'm doing the Safety Orange, which is a fluo paint from Air, uh, Army Painter's Air Range. And I'm just going over it again, those same cracks, the same white areas, but even hitting that over spray uh, to make it have that nice glowing like effect. And the next paint I'm, putting, I'm gonna put on is another fluo paint, but I, I found it made it too bright. I wasn't expecting to do that, but there's another uh, step you must do before that. All right, so to do this, this is a quick, cool, awesome thing. And I found on his uh, spear there, I already tried it. I decided to put a little bit more of a glow on it. Uh, than just the cracks because it is smaller okay so the next part is taking some matte white paint and just taking a very tiny brush and getting right in that recess this is very long very tedious but you'll see why there's a there's a reason for my madness okay and it's hard to get all the little areas so if you miss some it's not the end of the world uh, if you forgot to do some originally it looks a bit weird because you'll notice on the fingers I was like oh I missed some of the cracks 
and I put the white paint and I'm like oh that's like really pops and it doesn't have that glowy effect you know because I forgot it but it still looks amazing I hope you guys are enjoying these videos uh, have you played Conquest? Uh, if not, again, uh, I'll mention again, go take a look at their eShop. You can pre-order this guy, $99.99 from their shop. I find it, to me, it's a bit much, but a lot of you guys love these miniatures. Uh, I mean, you're getting a lot of plastic for your buck. And if you want to save 10%, use East Mini 10. Okay, use that code. Uh, the link is in the description. The code is in the description. Uh, the code will pop up at the end of the video as well. So keep an eye out for that. Go take a look at their eShop. Go pre order this. Support me with them as well because they sent this to me for free, which is amazing. Again, again, I will not thank them enough for this. Uh, one of my very first sponsors on the channel uh, for sending me stuff, which is great. Like, this is. I love this and Parabellum keep on doing what you do I love your miniatures I don't play the game enough but I love the miniatures and I love painting them so and especially building them building a miniature is quite relaxing it's very nostalgic it's very chill uh, if you haven't put together even a Warhammer or whatever and you find you come upon like a uh, a set that's used or like that someone's selling for cheap you know what just buy it put it together and don't even you don't have to paint or anything just put it together and you'll see how just building, like if you're a modeling person like that likes to do model cars, you know what it's like to build something and see the, the end result. You see all this plastic at first and you're like, what the heck is this and how does it go together? But then you get this end result and then you're like, I want to paint this thing. All right, so I'm using the neon yellow now. It's another fluo, it's an air paint by the way, but it goes on well with a brush, but it goes on more like you can see now the difference between the overspray and the painting version, right? So the painting version really gets into those cracks, but it's just a little too bright for me. And after it dried, I'd already set up all my video editing stuff. So what I did is I actually put a little bit of Cazandora yellow. Okay, this is a shade from Citadel on top of that area. And I try to get just the, those areas and it you see in the picture the difference. Okay, it doesn't have that yellow fluorescent eye popping craziness. Because when I see it in the light, I was like, wow. You really see that yellow pop out and almost like a greenish yellow to it. It's a little too bright for me. I could have used just a regular yellow maybe from their war paints range uh, or a lava effect or something like that. Anyway, so there we go. And then I'm going to just finish off with the eyes here. I end in yellow, a little bit of contrast paint on there. And there you have it, folks. The Hephaestian giant from the city states faction is painted, ready for the table and take on any other faction in the conquest i want to thank you guys for watching and we'll see you all in the next one